Right, we have a cylindrical tank and there's a small hole at the base. I'll just put it there. And then water is leaking out. We're told that the height of the water at time t is x. That's going to be going down. And the rate of change of the height of the water, now that is going to be dx by dt, because it's how the height changes with time. And we're told that it is, uh, we're modeling it to be proportional to the square root of the height of the water. So proportional to root x. And this implies that dx by dt is going to equal k root x. That's how proportionality works. The two, you know, is one doubles, the other doubles, um, and they're basically related through a scale factor, which is our k. We're then told that when t is 100, x is 0 0.64, and the, oh, wait, the, the height is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.0032. So we can say that minus, it's very important we get that in, minus 0 0.0032 is going to equal k times the square root of 0 0.64. So you can bet k is going to be minus 0 0.004, but let's just let's just check. That's actually going to be 0 0.8 when you find the square roots. And that is minus. So you have to show sufficient working for it. Uh, that's that is enough. And so dx by dt equals minus 0 0.004 times the square root of x as required. Okay, nice one. Now we're asked to find an expression for x in terms of t. So that's going to involve solving this differential equation. Don't forget, we've got this other condition that when t is 100, x is 0 0.64. We've not yet used that. So as things stand, I've got, actually, this is x to the half. Um, and so I've got a differential equation, and the right-hand side is a function of x. So I can't just integrate it directly. What we have to do is do separation of variables and get it onto the left-hand side, which is going to involve dividing by x to the half, which is going to give us x to the minus a half dx by dt. And that is equal to minus 0 0.004. Okay, now we can integrate. I always like to do it like this. Sometimes people like to times by dt and then integrate. I am I always do it. I just think it uh, better explains why it works. I integrate both sides with respect to t. Because using the chain rule, this actually becomes dx. Okay, it's the same as when you do integration by substitution. So add 1 to the power gives x to the half, divide by the new power of a half gives 2, 2x two to the half is equal to minus 0.004t plus c. And I'm going to put my boundary, my initial condition in, sorry, it's like a, a time condition, boundary condition I think, is it? It's some sort of condition. Uh, t is 100 and x is 0.64. So we're going to get 2 times the square root of 0 0.64, which I said as before is 0 0.8, and that is going to be minus 0 0.4 plus c. That's 1.6 plus 0 0.4, c is actually 2. So I get 2 times the square root of x is equal to minus 0.004t plus 2, which means the square root of x is going to be 1 minus 0.002t, I've just rewritten it slightly, and therefore x is going to be this squared. Okay, good solution to this equation. Finally, we're asked to hence determine at what time, according to the model, the tank will be empty. So tank empty 
example, it's going to be when the height of the water is zero. So when x is equal to zero. And that is going to be when the, the bracket is zero. So 1 minus 0.002t is equal to zero. So I can add 0.002t onto both sides and then divide by 0.002. So it's going to be 1 over 0.002 gives 500. And I did, you know, it's very tempting to leave it like this, but the mark scheme expects you to just write a little conclusion. Tank empty, just give context after. 500 seconds. Yeah, I really enjoy this topic, especially when it's sort of given applications. Hope you enjoyed it too. Well done.